Thanks for joining. I'm Michael Kruse and work at the Argonne National Lab on the Exascale Computing Project. This is a talk about modeling the auto-tuning search space for loop nest transformations. It is organized into four sections. We will start with a preface to introduce loop transformations and continue with two shapes for search spaces, vectors and trees. The fourth section concludes our findings. But let's first introduce loop transformations and compiler optimization hints. This slide shows unwarning, one of the most common loop optimizations. It replaces a loop and its body with another loop, but multiple body iterations duplicated a number of times. This may help the processor to fill the instruction pipeline or help other optimizations that use instructions from different iterations. The compiler has to take care that iterations that do not completely cover a full unrolled iteration are still executed. One could just write the replacement code directly, but it's just easier to tell the compiler to do it by adding a Pragma directive in front of the loop. Most general purpose compilers support such kinds of Pragmas, but they are not standardized by C or C++, and so every compiler has a different set of directives they support with different syntax. Very many different loop transformations are commonly known in the literature. But very few are actually supported by compilers as part mass. Only unrolling is somewhat universal. What is also not supported is chaining multiple transformations to the same loop. The result of this would actually depend on the order in which these transformations are applied. The general rule for the syntax here is that a directive applies to what's on the next line, either a literal loop or if it's another transformation, the outcome of that transformation. So I implemented a bunch of loop transformations as an extension in the Clang compiler. All of these are also composable. Special shout out to the ID program at the beginning of this list. It allows assigning a unique loop identifier to each loop. Instead of applying to the next line, a transformation can alternatively apply to the loop with a specific name. This allows also to apply transformations on loops generated by other transformations that are not the outermost. The implementation of these works like this. The directives are translated into loop metadata in the LLVM IR. The metadata is picked up by Poly and applied to the loop nest. Poly makes it astonishingly easy to apply loop transformations and also ensures that the program semantics are preserved. So far, this was a summary of my presentation from the last LLVM in HPC workshop. In the meantime, I'm trying to upstream this to Clang with a slightly different syntax because the Pragma Clang loop syntax clashes with Clang's own optimization hints that do not respect the transformation order. Also, I'm working in the OpenMP committee to add such loop transformations to the standard. OpenMP 5.1 has been published just before this workshop and contains a tile and an unwall directive. In contrast to compiler optimization hints, for OpenMP directives, it's the programmer's responsibility to ensure that it does not change the program's meaning. Compilers will not check that. Let's consider an example on how these directives can be used to optimize a loop nest. Here we have a naive matrix matrix multiplication kernel based on the Polybench benchmark suite implementation. Because we did not implement a loop distribution transformation yet, we first distribute the loop manually. This creates bigger perfectly nested loops. Some transformations like tiling or interchange only work on perfectly nested loops. This means we can apply more transformations with more loops. This is a larger perfect loop nest optimized with Pragmas. It applies the macro-kernel optimization that all CPU-based BLAS implementations use as well. The most optimized matrix multiplication implementations use hand-coded assembly for the microkernel. Here we just rely on the compiler's loop vectorizer. The first thing this does is assigning a unique loop identifier for each loop. Our choice is i, j, and k, the same as for the loop counter variables. The first transformation is tiling. After tiling, there will be six loops instead of three. The six successor loops each get their own loop identifiers. The next transformation is loop interchange. This shuffles the six loops around to get memory access in order. The last two transformations are array packing. The copy of, uh, these copy the working sets of array A and B that are used in the inner, lo uh, inner loops into their own memory regions that fit into the L1 and L2 caches. Maybe most importantly, it transposes array B to make its accesses consecutive and the CPU's prefetcher will pick up the data in advance. 
This is how the code would look like after Polly applied the transformations. I think this well shows how Quartmas can make the job of optimizing loops easier. The performance you get is shown here in the blue bar. It is much better than without the Quartmas. Of course, hand-optimized code like MKL is still better. Especially DGEM has been optimized to the death since it is used so often. The green bar is Polly's own matrix multiplication optimization. It applies a few more optimizations that we did not expose with directives yet, but obviously at least that performance should be reachable as well using directives. And there are some more transformations that we could implement on top of that. Well, but all this assumes that the programmer knows what the best optimization is. That's probably not often the case. Can we make the computer do it instead? One of the methods for this is autotuning. The general term autotuning describes letting the program run with different optimizations until we found the best performing one. This talk is about the choice for the autotuning search space. Most often, an optimization configuration is represented by a fixed length list of numbers, hence, the search space being a vector space. State of the art has established surprisingly many methods to approach an optimum of a black box function. The black box here is a runtime of the program that is optimized using a set of parameters, like tile sizes. The slide shows a few of these methods. Part of the task is to choose the parameters to try out, since exhaustively trying out all of them is far too much. Predictive modeling tries to find a regression function that models the samples with the least error. We can then analytically find the extrema of that model function. Empirical auto-tuning instead only tries to converge to the optimum instead of modeling the entire search space. Simulated annealing, for instance, probabilistically modifies a configuration and prefers the one with the lowest execution time. So to set up auto-tuning of loop directives, we use these components. First, we use YTOpt that implements the optimization algorithms. We use Plopper to insert the directive into the source code. And of course, we use myloop pragma extensions for Clang, which support transformation composition. The file to be modified by Plopper looks like this. Plopper is going to replace the hashtags by some value, so either the tile size or entire pragma lines. This is how the search space is defined with YTOpt. We have a selection of possible tile sizes and some loop pair mutations. Array picking for A and B can be enabled or not. And here is how the auto-tuning progresses using YTOpt's random forest strategy. Indeed, it converges towards some minimum at the end. This is the fastest configuration it found. I don't know a deeper meaning into why this is the fastest configuration. Just note that this is not DGEM, but sur 2 k which has a non-rectangular loop nest. And how amazing I find that we can tile and interchange that with poly. So, vector auto-tuning. It is the most widely used search space by far, and so many algorithms exist that can be used to optimize it. It also allows us to exploit relationships between values, such as if a tile size of 42 is good, changing it to 41 or 43 is probably not going to change much. If both give worse performance, we might have reached a local minimum. But there are also problems. For one, the user has to define the possibilities to choose from which transformations we want to consider, and what parameters there are. Second, we cannot consider all the transformation compositions. If you remember the search space from before, we only gave it the choice between two permut permutations out of six. But also, there is no theoretical limit on how often we could apply tiling, for instance. Each tiling introduces another tile size parameter. It also means if we do not, uh, do not choose to enable some tiling, the tiling parameter is unused. One could argue that the machine learning algorithm will just find out, but at least it will have to waste some, uh, waste some evaluations to do so. Furthermore, the algorithm will double in the dark if there are no numerical relationships, like for loop permutations. Still, using a vector space has been well established for auto-tuning, and all auto-tuning frameworks use it. Here I want to name some other approaches that apply it to loop auto-tuning. Chill uses a recipe file instead of Pragmas that describes the sequence of transformations. Only the transformation parameters like tile sizes are auto-tuned. 
Similarly, domain-specific autotuners like Patus for stencils autotune mostly numeric parameters like tile and block sizes. They also consider a fixed set of other transformations that are typical for their domain, but not any possible combination, which is why they are not general purpose. Engine, uh, engines based on recursive rewriting rules like lift and spiral also specialize on specific domains, although they, are, they don't necessarily need to be. Lift does stencils and spiral does digital signal processing. Halide Tudor uh, encodes transformation sequences in a fixed length vector. A validator checks whether a vector suggested by OpenTuner is decodable before trying it out. It's a bit like fast testing. A very different approach is let's see, where the search space are the coefficients of a schedule function. Using the polyhedral model, the schedule function can be translated into a loop nest. It is general purpose, but is also limited in what transformations it can represent. For, in for instance, parallelism and unrolling is difficult. Does autotuning always need to be based on a vector space? Let's look into a tree-shaped search space. But first, let's do some motivational observation. How does a performance develop when not applying all transformations at once? Let's go back to the matrix multiplication example. Without any transformation, it executes in 6 seconds. When applying tiling, it's reduced to 3.5 seconds. With an additional loop interchange, we get 3.2 seconds. The array packing of B makes it half, uh, another half a second faster. And when also packing array A, we are at 1.7 seconds. That is, simulated annealing that only adds more transformations could automatically find the optimization sequence. The search space for that is a tree, rooted in the configuration that does not apply any optimization. Based on the available loops, one can enumerate all the transformations that could be applied. The loops available changes after a transformation. For instance, tiling doubles the number of loops and loop iterations that are executed on different threads are not available for most transformations anymore. The depth of the tree is not necessarily limited and the node degree is variable. Both properties make it unsuitable for encoding into a fixed length vector. To avoid the need for the programmer to define the search space, I added an option to poly which exports the loop nest structure to a JSON file. It will exactly contain the loop nest as seen by poly that it can apply uh, loop transformations to. To also get the source location of each loop, one must compile with debug info. I also implemented a proof of concept autotuner. It starts with compiling and running the original program source. This will yield the JSON file for the loop nest structure and the execution time of the unoptimized program. We can then generate the first level of the search tree. As a proof of concept, it is just applying loop interchange, parallelization, and tiling. To keep the number of configurations in check, it only generates a Cartesian product of five different tile sizes. From then on, we select one configuration to evaluate. For this proof of concept, I implemented only a simple strategy that selects an unevaluated child of the fastest yet configuration. At the beginning, the fastest yet and only configuration will of course be the baseline configuration. From the very start, our intention was to eventually replace this with the Monte Carlo Tree Search, or MCTS. The prototype strategy can be seen as an exploitation-only extreme form of MCTS. We then insert the pragmas into the program at the source code location and then compile and run the result. The execution time measurement is then used to update the priority queue to find the next configuration to evaluate. This is how the search tree looks like in practice after expansion of three configurations and evaluation of all the children. A red note means that the evaluation has failed. Either Polly's dependency analysis rejected the optimization as not semantics preserving or the execution timed out after 120 seconds. To test out the autotuner, we applied it to three Polybench benchmarks, DGEM, SIR2K and Covariance. The test machine was a workstation with 112 logical threads. This is intentional and will be relevant later. We let it run for 6 hours and looked at the result. Here is the result for DGEM. There is a cross for each completed experiment. 
The blank space in between appears where all the experiments failed, either because of the dependency check or the execution timeout. And what was the fastest optimization? Does it rediscover the four transformations we applied manually? Sadly, no. It only parallelized the outermost loop. Of course, not all transformations and tile sizes we use there are actually in the search space. But it also makes sense if you think about it. On a machine with 112 threads, this gives this configuration a huge hit start over all other transformations. Our search strategy is greedy and will not consider a sibling configuration when there are unexplored faster conf configurations under this node. Because a parallelized loop cannot be transformed anymore, only its inner loops are checked, which apparently does not improve the performance anymore. Because of that, we also tested DGEM without parallelization. The result is much more interesting, although we do not get the multi-level tiling for each level in the cache hierarchy that we hoped for. Maybe the possible tile sizes are just too coarse. Here is the result for sur 2 k It's the same phenomenon. It quickly finds the parallelization of the outermost loop and does not improve beyond that. Without parallelization, unlike DGEM and covariance, it does not consider interchange to be necessary. Same boring result for covariance. Only the outermost loop is parallelized again. We again get a more interesting result without parallelization. Note that it is only about twice as slow as the parallel version. I intentionally use the massively parallel machine to show that the search strategy is too simple and can get easily get stuck in local minima. This is why we are working on an implementation of Monte Carlo tree search to replace that strategy. MCTS is an obvious choice for search over trees. It is used, for instance, for chess IIs. At this slide, I wanted to claim that we are the first applying MCTS to loop auto tuning, or maybe even using a tree shaped search base. To be sure, just before the deadline of the camera-ready version of this submission, I googled auto-tuning Monte Carlo tree search again, like I did when I was originally looking to solutions for this problem and for related research. Well, turns out I'm not the first. Maybe unsurprisingly, someone else published this uh, idea before me. There is an unpublished uh, paper introducing ProTuner, which applies MT MCTS to Halide. ProTuner itself is based on the successor of Halide Tune. Because Halide Tune was unbearably slow, the Halide project actually replaced it with a domain specific auto tuner, in this case, image processing. Beam Search actually made it feasible to use a general purpose auto tuner. The re replacement of Beam Search with MCTS by ProTuner worked another significant improvement, in particular, avoiding getting stuck in local extrema. While this means that we are not the first with this idea, these publications confirm, uh, confirm its merits, which we are not able to confirm with just a proof of concept. Still, tree search seems to be a quite obvious idea, and these are the only other works we could find related to it. Even in my own experience, I found it difficult to convey the idea to peers. The prevalence of vector spaces in machine learning might be a reason for it. Let's summarize our findings and what we are intending to do next. We showed that a tree-shaped search space can better represent the composition of loop transformations. What we are currently working on is to actually implement Monte Carlo tree search. On top of that, there are other improvements that we can do. For one, we can prune the tree from nonsensical transformations, like interchanging a loop nest twice, or consider that in some cases the order in which transformations are applied does not matter. That's especially true when they apply to different loops. Also consider that vector space learning can be better for parameters like tile sizes. We might do a two-level search space. Each node in the search tree represents a vector space optimization for its transformation parameters. Finally, we should be able to tune multiple loop nests in a program separately. Our current experiments contain just one loop nest each. Finally, I would like to thank the US Department of Energy, its Exascale Computing Project, and Agon for supporting this work. That's it. Thanks to everyone for your attention.